I want to welcome you to World Water Day here at the University of the Virgin Islands. This um, event is being held in partnership with um, Cooperative Extension Service, which has done a lot of work in the area of water and water quality. Um, really want to thank everyone for coming. Um, so today we're going to talk about safe drinking water and cisterns in particular. We have a whole host of experts who are going to be joining us today talking about all of their ideas, solutions, the research and work that they do in our community. We have Lisa Hirsch from Aquagenics. We have Greg Keen from Sawyer Products. We have Nimon from um, Caribbean Water Technologies. And we have Carlos and Luis from RCAP Solutions who are our brothers from the islands of Puerto Rico who also work in water quality, stormwater and wastewater. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, on behalf of Rachel um, from Coral Bay Community Council, um, we are going to start with uh, Luis, who is going to kick off um, with a study in the Coral Bay community on the beautiful island of St. John. Dr. Guarnell, welcome. Would you like to say a few words before we get started? Yes, no, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, Christina, uh, for, this, for being slightly late uh, at some finding the link uh, issues. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, this is a really exciting um, event today. Last week, we talked a lot about problems and the problem associated with uh, being able to deal um, the problems that drought causes and the problems that getting water for the farmer, sort of, you know, and how to deal with the lack of water. Today we're looking at a different question when we have a lot of water, um, how to use it in a safe way, especially for households. So um, it is a really exciting event today. Uh, really happy uh, for all the panelists to, um, to be present and share with us uh, their wealth of knowledge and really appreciate it of everyone who uh, is joining us today. So without further ado, I would like to int um, introduce also our colleagues, Michael Emanuel, who is driving today, and Ms. Ariel Stoltz, who's the Assistant um, Director of Green Technology Center, which is um, in the University of the Virgin Islands and focuses specifically on amazing technologies to help us power through all types of disasters and mitigate things such as drought and maintain the awesomeness that we know as water quality. So without further ado, Luis, would you like to start? Uh, well, yeah, I'm Luis Melendez. I'm from uh, uh, Puerto Rico. I work for Arcap Solutions. Arcap Solutions is a company that uh, integrates uh, six, uh, six uh, non-profit organization in the USA. And uh, our RCAP solution is it uh, works in the Northeast, including Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. We provide assistance to small communities uh, regarding water, wastewater, and solid waste. And uh, we have partnered uh, last year with the Coral Bay Community Council to provide a, a training on uh, cistern, uh, Basic, basic operation concepts and, and treatment and what uh, should be uh, taken in consideration if you're going to use your system for, for drinking water. I don't know how you're going to progress with the presentation from Rachel from here. Cristina? Cristina? Mr. Emanuel, can you do, oh, there you go. There you go. One moment.
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rachel McKinley, and I'm excited for the opportunity to share our work on such an important and interesting topic, safe drinking water. It's been wonderful working with such an amazing team and with many of our partners in government agencies, nonprofit organizations, individuals, businesses, and of course, the university to support the BI community to ensure that everyone has safe drinking water. We can't do this alone. I want to thank our partners from the University of Virgin Islands, Alam and Asil, the Corporate Extension Service, the College of Science and Math, and the Caribbean Green Technology Center for including us in this project, developing the presentation. So what does safe drinking water mean? The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has drinking water regulations established by the Clean Water Act that define standards of various water quality indicators and contaminants. I'm going to use contaminants moving forward. Now, if these contaminants do not meet a specific standard, then the water is determined to be unsafe for drinking. Contaminants fall into one of three federally regulated standard categories, primary, secondary, and unregulated. The primary and secondary standard lists are provided as links and were sent to Christina if you'd like more information. These lists also have summaries of the potential health hazard for each specific standard if it is not met. The USVI rules only regulate public drinking water systems to ensure that these larger system managers meet EPA drinking water standards. Therefore, those who own their own system cistern well are responsible for making sure that their water is safe to drink. Now, all water sources and storage can have some level of contaminants. Nothing's always perfectly clean. Groundwater, guts, even the storage systems, a bottled water company or a public water system plants trucked in water and our private cisterns can have some sort of contaminant within it. Essentially meaning not really a good idea to drink the water straight from the source or storage. You got to treat your water. In the territory, we're mostly concerned about the primary standard contaminants, total coliform bacteria and turbidity and the secondary standard contaminants, pH and dissolved, total dissolved solids, TDS. Past studies have shown the presence of coliform bacteria and high turbidity in stored water across the VI. Christina's cistern water study, which she can go into more detail, is continuing to identify which contaminants are present or do not meet EPA standards in our, in our water supply and storage systems. With this information from cistern water studies, we know how to treat our water supply so that it is drinkable. It also allows us to know which contaminants we need to routinely test for in our treated drinking water to ensure that our treatment system is continuously working properly. Pearl Bay Community Council works with Ocean System Laboratory the only public EPA certified lab on St. Thomas to help Coral Bay residents get their water tested routinely. Um, their residential drinking water tests for coliform bacteria and turbidity. Total coliform is a group of related generally harmless bacteria that indicates an environmental contamination and the potential presence of harmful pathogens or organisms, germs. Now, this is measured as it's present or absent. It's there, or it's not. Be 
fecal coliform bacteria is a subgroup of total coliform bacteria that exists in animal intestines and feces. Fecal coliform indicates fecal contamination and a greater risk for the presence of harmful germs. E. coli bacteria is a subgroup of fecal coliform that is specific to humans and warm-blooded animals like deer, donkeys, and goats. Um, not all E. coli strands are harmful. The presence of E. coli also indicates a fecal contamination and a greater risk for the presence of the harmful pathogen E. coli 0157H7 that causes severe illness. All coliform bacteria tests must be absent to meet EPA drinking water standards and must be tested within six hours of collection. Now, turbidity is a measure of water clarity. As turbidity increases, the transparency of water decreases because suspended particles or dirt block light's ability to pass through. These dirt particles provide places for bacteria and other contaminants to live, increasing your risk of exposure to harmful germs. Turbidity can also affect the color of water. It's measured in nophilometric turbidity units. We're just gonna say NTUs. Um, to meet drinking water standards, turbidity must be below one NTU, and that's very low and very clear. Um, hi, this is Craig. Um, do we have a, um, a sound issue? Yeah. I don't know. It was, I'm not sure she recorded it. So I think we can just talk through the, um, the PowerPoint. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Apologies everyone. Um, this, there seems to be another a technical issue. Um, with uh, with the PowerPoint, um, maybe we move to the next. Um, so the, it seems that the, the next slide are uh, really about how to um, set up your system for for cleaning with uh, a UV system. Um, so you remove the sediments um, first. Um, the sediments are not a very good idea to have because they can uh, clog lines uh, 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 inside your your house for the for the plumbing in addition to carrying, you know, uh, different type of bacteria. And the UV light basically um, makes the water potable by um, neutralizing, neutering uh, uh, most of the harmful uh, uh, bacteria, all living things, so they cannot reproduce. And at this point, the water is, is uh, pretty much safe to, uh, safe to drink. So um, because of the technical difficulty, Christina, I suggest that maybe we move on to the next um, speaker. Well, Luis is here from Archive Solutions, and he worked on some of the outreach with her, so he can maybe briefly discuss some of the things that he did um, with their project, and then we can move to the next speaker if that's okay. Okay, Luis, do you want to take it from there? Yes, yes, I can. And apologies yes. for that. I'm not sure what happened. Let me set this up.
Uh, you, you are seeing the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Like I said, uh, ARCAP Solutions uh, is a nonprofit organization uh, dedicated specifically to work to our improving condition of uh, rural America. Uh, in the includes uh, economic development, but all, but uh, specific, more specifically in in water, wastewater, and solid waste. Uh, and we have been working with uh, uh, Coral Bay Community Council since uh, last year. Uh, in, a, in a, a three trainings we provided uh, with uh, regarding the how to manage the cistern, also septic systems, and we conducted the, the, the workshop for uh, for a professional or, or focus towards professional, and then we have a, a workshop uh, focus and directed towards uh, the residents, because uh, in the case of regulation. Uh, and specifically in the Virgin Islands, the regulations apply for uh, systems, what is considered potable water system is, is one that have eight connections or serve more than 20 people. And uh, the individual household is not covered by the regulation, but as an individual, you should be concerned about the quality of your water. And that's the message that we want to bring uh, to the people regarding the use of the search, the system. There are certain things that they should look and there are certain maintenance uh, that they should take care because if not, the water that I using is not uh, potable. And one, the minimum thing they should do is uh, try to conduct uh, about quarterly some uh, bacteriological testing uh, in order to ensure that they have a, a good quality water. And uh, our CAP solutions uh, can provide assistance in water, wastewater, and solid waste. And we can uh, assist with the GIS as mapping of assets for, for small systems, plan operation, troubleshooting and process control, regulation compliance, vulnerability assessment as required by, by the EPA, emergency response plans, management and organization community system, development of bylaws and incorporation documents, uh, development of new projects for drinking water and wastewater regionalization, because sometimes maybe not as viable in the or feasible in the USBI, but in certain places, if you can, uh, joint venture with another system, nearby system, things can improve and you can uh, get uh, materials at a better price if you are joined with another system rather than doing individually. Uh, also with the financial, we can help you planning capital improvement, median household income surveys that sometimes is needed for you uh, to apply for USDA uh, funds. Uh, we have done that. Development rates for water or wastewater system. Establishing a sustainable and a proper rate for a system is the main thing they should uh, have because if not, they are not sustainable and they will not be able to provide for the treatment and also the improvement the system requires. Budget development, infrastructure loan applications, environmental reports and other documents for loan applications and grant applications. Uh, training, we have done uh, a lot of trainings in the past three years in the in the USBI, in drinking water, wastewater, solid waste management and finances for board members, uh, preparation for operator certification tests, operation and maintenance of centralized and decentralized wastewater systems, development community leadership and regional co collaboration. Also in Puerto Rico, mostly, uh, we have uh, done some disaster response and recovery system assessment, laboratory resource interpretation, collaboration with government and, uh, and other agencies to deliver materials uh, for the, the impacted communities, water disinfection and filtration training, long-term recovery assistance, assist in preparation for future events and develop, uh, development of resiliency. Uh, the main thing about our, our service is that it's funded by USDA, EPA, and the human uh, and health uh, services of the United States and for the small communities that apply under all grants, the, the service is free. Uh, we are looking and uh, you can reach out 
to us. And uh, if you comply with our requirement, our service uh, doesn't cost you anything. And also if uh, on this assistance, we are not looking to be paid for. And this is our Archive Solutions team that works uh, directly with the USPI. Uh, myself, uh, Carlos Velasquez in wastewater, Edwin Vasquez in sustainable materials or solid, solid waste, and our boss, Josefa Torres. And this is the rest of our team in Puerto Rico. Sorry about the problems in uh, with the presentation. I don't don't know, Cristina, if I you want to try to get it uh, from my side. I have uh, the downloaded the presentation and my work better. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um, we'll um, make the powerpoints available. Thank you, Luis. Um, we're going to take questions at the very end. So if. Um, Sawyer would like to present, that would be great. Greg, are you ready? Is it? Yeah, are you ready? Okay, there you are. Um, Mr. Emanuel, can you pull up the Sawyer? PowerPoint. Yeah. So, sorry, Christina, I missed you calling my name. I thought that was um, a different name I heard, but my ears are not that good. Uh, I don't. Um, I can pull it up myself if you want, but before I even pull it up, I'd rather just start talking a little bit and then pull it up. Please do. That's okay? Yeah, please do. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for allowing me to join you here today. Um, Sawyer is just one piece of your total solution when it comes to cisterns or other water there. And, and I'd like to start by just saying how I got involved and met. I met Christina um, immediately after your, your double hurricane hit um, at a water conference in North Carolina. And she was a bit distraught, if I could say that, and when she showed up. And our hearts just went out as she described the situation in the Virgin Islands. We'd been following, but not knowing how we could be involved. And we just emptied out all of the, um, the water filters that we had brought along for samples and sent her home with those. So I just wanted to show you those before I go into the presentation. Uh, the filter that, that you've been using down there is this one here. You hook it up to a, a bucket. Um, you can do it. And um, I, when I travel, I hook mine up. I take your old plastic bottles that are laying all over the place and just hook it up straight up there. And you can just squeeze it through as well as, as use a gravity system. Uh, but you currently have, um, if I did my math right on the number of households, 40 to 45,000 households in the Virgin Islands, uh, you have about uh, every one out of every 10 homes in the Virgin Islands now has one of these in there for emergency use. And I'm going to introduce a new filter today as, as we'll go, I'll go along. Uh, but just wanted to let you see that one first. And uh, as I pull this up here now, um, and my, uh, my comment would be just that this has been a, uh, a true um, partnership with um, the university. And then we also, I've been down there twice and have met um, some, made some very good friends from uh, the Rotary, uh, East St. Thomas in particular, Rotary Club. Shout out to those of any of you who are on, on there today. Um, so with um, 4,200 filters now in homes, um, probably some more than that, that we don't even know about because you can just order these from Amazon. Um, but we, um, we work a little bit in, different as a company compared to most. We, and the Virgin Islands fits in between categories. This Sawyer was an outdoor recreation company since 1985. And it was more recently that it got involved in the international uh, humanitarian kind of response things. And then um, when the hurricanes hit in Virgin Islands, it kind of fell between the cracks because normally it would hit a U.S. market, but you don't really have the normal outdoor retailers down there. So we just kind of categorized it as we would the internationals, and we just started providing things at cost. So every filter we send to the Virgin Islands is sold at our cost of production. We, uh, Sawyer doesn't keep anything of, of a profit on, on these. Um, but I, I do want to start here with... Uh, 
just a background on why, wh where's water fit in and what's so important. And the first thing I'd ask you to do at, at this chart is ignore the title because there's a CDZ chart. And I know that some people get, get um, politically inclined on the words climate change. Never mind that. That's not what we're looking at here today. But if you look at the, the circle itself, the outside circle, where it has the words over on the left side, environmental you degradation. You have to share your screen. You have to share your screen. What's that? You can't see it. You, have you to can't share. see that screen. Okay, let me get out of there. Um, let me get out of that. You have to hit share the screen. Yeah, I did. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, let me record. Um, share screen. Um, well, you're not seeing a thing, huh? Can you share it on your end? If I'm struggling here? Yeah. Yes, um, just hold on a second. I'm, that might I'm be faster than you figure it out. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm bringing it up. Just hold on one second. Sorry. No worries. It's gonna open shortly. There we go. So hold on everyone. I'm just all right. Do this. And share the screen. There aren't very many slides here. There we go. So it be Everybody easy to can see the screen slide. now? Yep. Yes, now? perfect. Thank you. So okay, yes. you have control of this now? Uh, no, just tell me to switch sides. Yeah, next slide. All right. So here, um, I would don't want you to focus on the title, but on those circles there. Um, environmental degradation, extreme heat, severe weather, air pollution, all those. Those are things that just exist. Those We, ha we know we have those. You know you have extreme weather, et cetera, et cetera. Down on the bottom ones, you know, water quality issues, they're everywhere. And when you don't have water supply, you know there are impacts and list some of those impacts around there. Uh, the interesting thing from the CDC's perspective is that these are interwoven and uh, one impacts another. Um, but as you look at, at your water and just thinking of your own situation, the Virgin Islands, um, you know, um, even from the previous presentations, you have issues with your bacteria, your turbidities and things if you're trying to use cistern water. And you know that when you had your hurricanes, your supplies were interrupted. And that has significant um, impact if you have to use um, non-filtered dirty water, you run risk of diarrheal illness and other things. Um, and in the Virgin Islands, you have an, a, a great um, passion um, particularly the Rotary Clubs is, is um, promoting that uh, to deal with your environmental issues at all, as well. So with your environmental degradation, um, I'll say one of my very first memories in the Virgin Islands was Belongo Bay graciously opened up and let me stay there before they were really geared for that. And I sit in there and my son and I, and in an evening there, and we just watched faster than we could react, an empty plastic water bottle go past our feet and down the beach and into the water. And you know that happens hundreds, if not thousands of times a day somewhere around the islands and, and dealing with your plastic is an issue. So one of the beauties of, um, of our filter is that it can also um, help reduce your use of plastic um, with your water sources being you can go to the next slide with your water sources being, you know, whether it's the, um, the public water system with um, which is desalinization and some trucked water and such or if it's your, your private water supply, which is buying bottled water, you know, or, or if you're using directly out of your cistern, um, either way, you can, you, can, you can put a, if you're getting the city water, you can still use a Sawyer filter on your faucet and, and use that water and not be buying so much in plastic bottles. But I know you're doing a lot of testing down there, which is what this slide is. And that's all great to see good education in the schools, um, the importance of safe water, and, and that's, that's really good. Um, so go on the next slide. You can use our filters for both emergency and daily safe water drinking. And this is the new one. Actually, um, can you just not stop the sharing for a second there? And let me show another filter here in my hand first. So you can see this. This is the filter you have down there connects to the buckets. This is our new filter. The difference is, is on the end. Um, this one goes on to directly over a tap. And if you're gonna use it outside where you have a, a faucet connection, a threaded faucet, we can just 
put that adapter in there and just screw it on instead. Um, and that's our difference. So this one is the one that we're introducing today. And Christina will have more to say about these being available in, in the Virgin Islands for more homes. Go ahead and, and go back and share the screen then and we'll start that, that uh, short, very short, it's only a minute or so uh, video. I'm not sure if, um, if it's going to work. Um, usually videos, embedded videos are not. Yeah, it's, it's not going to work. Just okay. keep going. Then let's skip it for now then. You can get her in there later and put me back where I can just show more of it on live here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, this that's just there. Let, let's turn that off for a second. I'll just show you this filter. There you go. So the... Um, the, the Sawyer filters are um, very versatile. Like I said, you can hook onto a water bottle and use it. Um, but for your cistern water, um, we, were, we set you up to be putting it on uh, using buckets if you had to carry it. Um, if you have water pressure, whether that's you know in an emergency situations that can be disrupted depending on your cistern setup. But if you have any water pressure from a tank, you know, I mean, then you can just put this directly on a tap in your home and you can get your water directly from that. The, the, this one is an ease to use easier than others we've had because you can just reverse this to clean it. Our other ones, you have to back flush them with a special device. This one, the water's gonna run through your tap and then to, uh, to back flush it or clean it, we just put an adapter on the, the discharge part, turn it around, push that in on, the, uh, on your tap, and then you can just run the water through there and it'll back flush it. And just a, a second or, or a minute or so, you know, flushing it out afterwards and you're back in business again. Um, and these filters then will last, last you um, really forever. Uh, they, they don't have a limited lifespan. If we go back to the slideshow then, I'm sorry to make you go back and forth. Uh, I'll show you a little one visual of, of how it works, uh, what the inside of this looks like. Next slide there. So the, um, or you had it, uh, you lost it there. Here we go. The next slide. There we go. So the inside hollow fiber membrane was originally developed for dialysis machines um, so to filter blood. But the, the way it works with the water is that um, the, the holes are 0.1 micron. The smallest bacteria is larger than 0.1 micron. So it's a blocking device. It blocks all of that, blocks all of your turbidity, the things that were mentioned in the previous um, presentations of being your, your cause of your, your illnesses. And to clean it then, the back flushing just cleans off those, um, those holes and, and, and makes it uh, reusable for a very long life. Uh, we have them documented in use for more than 10 years in rough situations using turbid water on a daily basis. Um, we have tests underway where we're going up to a, a million gallons at a time to show that, uh, that they will last that long. Uh, we are only about a third of the way through those numbers of, uh, right at the moment. Um, but it's, that's, this is just how the technology would work. Um, go on to the next slide. So what I would like to say in the Virgin Islands, though, is that Sawyer, it's, it's a unique business because it's a family-owned business, and they aren't in it to make a profit anymore. The filter I just showed you is currently selling on Amazon for $39, $40. Um, our, our cost to, to any nonprofit is under $20, and it's at our cost of production of whatever that is at the time. Um, this group of people became my friends on the first visit down there, and you may recognize some of them, but I just wanted to point out the gentleman uh, in there that's there in, besides me, and that's Andy Top. That's his airplane, was his airplane. And uh, he had a heart and a passion for the Virgin Islands and for safe water and for the Sawyer water filter. And on that particular trip, he had left the back seats at home to make more room. And he had put, uh, I think it was 14 boxes, 700 filters in the back of that plane. And my son and I crowded in around him and had boxes on our laps as we went island hopping there to do some training and distribution. And sadly, it was not but a few weeks after this picture was taken, very few weeks that that plane went down. And and Andy did not survive. And so anything involved with the Virgin Islands, just like to stop and, and just honor this man, Andy, who uh, who's had such such a passion for, for what you are, are doing. 
Um, so just in recap there, soya is just one piece of your picture. But if you are in a situation where you want to reduce your plastic use by using the water you uh, have in your home rather than buying, you can either put it on a container that you're dumping into like a bucket, or you now can have the new tap filter and put it directly onto your faucet. And um, you, can, you can connect uh, that way. And my contact information is on the final slide, which you don't need to show up there. And if there's any questions that you're not answered today, feel free to send me a text and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Next up, we have Lisa from Lisa Hirsch from Aquagenics, another of our partners from UNC um, Water and Health Conference. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Christina. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, can everyone see this presentation? Yes. Excellent. Okay, good day everybody. I'm Lisa Hirsch with Aquagenics. We provide portable water quality test kits and we're located in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, I'm thankful and honored to be included in this panel today on such an important day. Um, I also met Christina at the Water and Health Conference in Chapel Hill and was maybe at the very same conference that Greg was attending. So it's, it's good to see everyone uh, again. Uh, Waterborne illnesses due to fecal pathogens transmitted by harmful bacteria are major threats to human health around the world, no matter where one is located. And these pathogens, um, typically enter water so sources and supplies uh, via the feces of humans and uh, warm-blooded animals. Although much progress has been made in the past 20 years or so in improving water quality around the world, the World Health Organization still publishes uh, grim statistics about the current status of safe water. Uh, many people who live in more developed affluent countries are shocked to learn uh, about such global water quality statistics. And that was certainly true of me when I started working at Aquagenics in 2013. I was aware of water quantity issues of access to water but I was quite ignorant uh, about poor water quality around the world. E. coli is the major species of fecal coliform bacteria, and it is the recommended indicator organism for testing drinking water by the World Health Organization uh, and the US uh, EPA. And uh, E. coli is also the preferred indicator organism for numerous uh, national water quality standards around the world as well. And it is the preferred indicator because it's accepted as the most specific indicator of fecal pathogens in water, as E. coli generally has to be introduced into water sources and supplies be via the feces of humans and warm-blooded animals. Um, in the US Virgin Islands, you might read about E. coli outbreaks in drinking water, perhaps due to um, home cisterns becoming contaminated or following uh, natural disasters such as flooding uh, and hurricanes. Uh, when uh, E. coli enters water systems and through sewage and septa septage and other uh, kinds of waste matter. Routine water quality is in testing. testing is important for many things, such as assessing if water is safe to drink or sustaining uh, water sanitation and hygiene systems and services and for water safety planning. Uh, routine microbial testing also is important for uh, meeting all targets in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 6 that is dedicated to water sanitation and hygiene. 
Now, uh, earlier presentations today mentioned uh, total coliforms and uh, the Clean Water Act, uh, which is all true, um, of course. So here in the USA, public water system testing, microbial testing, is regulated by what's called the revo revised total coliform rule. And public water systems first test for total coliforms only. Total coliforms are a very broad group of bacteria, um, much of them harmless. Uh, some of total coliforms may or may not be of fecal origin. So if public water systems obtain a positive test result for total coliforms, just a presence absence test, straight up yes or no, they are mandated by law to follow up with E. coli testing as the more specific indicator for fecal contamination. And water quality testing should be easy for anyone to do by themselves. Uh, no matter who you are and where you are. Uh, it's so crucial to know if your water is safe to drink. And if testing methods are too difficult uh, and complicated, uh, testing risks being uh, ignored or even abandoned. So this is where our test kits come in. Uh, particular, particularly one I want to tell you about today, the Aquagenics CBT kit for E. coli and total coliforms bacteria. It simultaneously detects E. coli and total coliforms bacteria in 100 ml samples. Um, these are portable low cost test kits that facilitate rapid and robust monitoring of microbial water quality. So you could see what they look like. They're very compact and lightweight. It's plastic in our growth media. On the left, you'll see our uh, presence absence kit that gives you a yes or no test results. And on the right, our most probable number kit or MPN kit that quantifies the concentration of bacteria in a 100 ml sample. If there's one word that can be used to describe our water quality test kits, it's simplicity. They're easy to use with very basic training. They have a very low learning curve. They do not require labs or electricity or a cold chain to store the growth medium. They're designed specifically uh, for field level on-site testing outside of the lab, no matter where one is in any res low resource area. They work at variable temperatures. Constant temperature control in an incubator is not required. And even better, CBT kits enable ambient temperature incubation, uh, room temperature at or above 25 degrees Celsius and you obtain your ambient temperature test results in 20 to 48 hours, depending on the temperature. Color changes are easy to see, easy to identify. They're completely unambiguous. Uh, CBT kits are very compact, even very easy to transport and carry around. Our growth medium has a two year shelf life and the kits meet the World Health Organization drinking water quality guidelines, which are to measure for E. coli bacteria in 100 ml samples. They're very, very easy to use. Here's just a brief chart of how to use our presence absence kit. Um, you, I'm gonna stop sharing my screens for a second so I could just point to you some things. except I can't stop sharing my screen. I'm not sure why. Um, here we go. Okay, sorry about that. Can everyone still hear me? Yes. Great, okay. Uh, you collect your 100 ml sample with a 100 milliliter thio bag, fill it up to the fill line. 
Um, you open our little packet of powder growth media. It's like a packet of granulated sugar or instant coffee. You cut it open with a scissor and pour it into that sample. Again, ambient temperature incubation at 25 degrees Celsius and above. And during that 20 to 48 hours, you'll notice that the color of the water will either have turned a blue or blue green or yellow. And if your uh, test result, if the color of your sample is blue or blue green, it's positive for E. coli. You can easily see that in sunlight. If you also want to see if it's positive for total coliforms, you can shine our UV flashlight on it and it put fluoresces. It is positive for total coliforms. And you, then you disinfect the sample with liquid bleach, just a, a couple ounces. Uh, equally easy to use our MPN kit to get a more diagnostic understanding of the true health risk of the water. Starts the same way, you collect your sample with the thio bag, pour in our powder growth medium. The one different step is you will open our compartment bag. I'm gonna flick over to our website so you can see what that looks like in a better view. The compartment bag resembles five test tubes of different um, Lisa, uh, yes? sorry to interrupt. I don't know if you're sharing your screen. Uh, it seems like you- Oh, are. good point. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Getting all carried away. Eeks. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. My apologies. This is what the compartment bag looks like. It has five compartments built into the bag of different compartments. And so these resemble five, essentially five test tubes that are built into uh, a plastic bag. So going back to the slides, you will pour the sample into that compartment bag up to the fill line. You'll seal the bag shut with a plastic clip. And again, ambient temperature incubation uh, for 24 to 48 hours. And the way you score your most probable number quantified test results is very easy. No math or statistics are required. We make it very easy for you. Uh, flashing back to this, you'll hold that compartment bag next to our color-coded MPN table, and you'll simply match the color sequence of your five compartments left to right to one of these 32 color-coded rows in the MPN table. For instance, if all five of your compartments are yellow, uh, that would be row one where your MPN level is zero E. coli. This is the upper 95% confidence interval, which goes hand in hand with all MPN tests, no matter the method. But what we do is we match that data against the World Health Organization health risk categories for water. So you are really able to drill down uh, and uh, obtain excellent data to make much for, more informed decisions about the true health risk of, of the water. So I will go make this larger one more time. All right. So here at Aquagenics, we are big believers in um, mobile data collection and sharing. It does the world no good if water quality data is collected on paper uh, or is just sell, uh, stored on in Excel workbooks on local PCs and nothing is accessible to the people who need to see the data most. So we work with two world-class uh, software companies, Aquvo and Mwater, uh, and they have smartphone apps that support our compartment bag test, the MPN test, and it further simplifies using our test because uh, the through your phone, you could take a picture of the sample. It will automatically calculate the MPN level uh, and provide automatically provide uh, the MPN level, the upper 95% CL and the World Health Organization health risk level. 
It lets you geocode surveys, map surveys, share data in real time. So thousands and thousands of users use these smartphone apps uh, around the world in conjunction with our water quality tests. Many different Organizations and entities use our portable water quality test kits. Government agencies and departments around the world, NGOs, humanitarian aid, disaster response for sure. Um, uh, of course, in the UVI, you're greatly affected by disaster response impacting water quality. And our test kits fill a real void in disaster areas where there often is no access to labs or electricity or even roads and infrastructure. So folks use our test kits on the spot and on site following disasters. Um, local water committees, citizen scientists, uh, universities, private companies, as well as uh, private well owners. So we'd love for you to learn more about our test kits and give them a try. Uh, here is my contact information. I gave these slides to Christina and Michael to share with everyone and uh, grateful for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was wonderful, very helpful. Naman from Caribbean Water Technologies. We're very excited to have you here. Are you ready to share your slides? I am, I am. Thank you very much. My name is Naman Bondran of Caribbean Water Technologies. Real quick, Caribbean Water Technologies is a, is a recent startup here in the Caribbean islands. Um, my company, Bondran Technologies International, has extended uh, CWT, the intellectual property rights for the uh, technology that we've patented and developed. The main reason is because we had come down to the Virgin Islands some years ago. And as a matter of fact, I was actually at the islands, I think the day before the first of the two hurricanes hit. And uh, shortly thereafter, you know, uh, after watching the disasters, I learned about um, the water situation there. And uh, something new was added to my lexicon called cisterns, which I hadn't heard of before. At the time, however, I had already been developing water purification technology, just was not sure of the application for it. So after, after spending more time in the Caribbean, I would say I've probably been there over the past three years, maybe about 17 or 18 times. I just got back from 76 days there a few weeks ago. The reason that I was there so long is because we were installing our technology. And I'll go ahead and pull up my slides now so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, Caribbean Water Technologies. First, and let me begin by thanking the University of Virgin Islands for the invitation. Um, we are collaborating with the university on a number of projects, all of them very exciting, everything to do with water, climate, um, and, and other issues. And uh, this, this is near and dear to our heart here at Caribbean Water Technologies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you to the, uh, the first in a line of units that, we, that we're introducing to the world. And the, the Virgin Islands is actually the perfect place for this technology. Um, as was mentioned in previous uh, presentations, uh, most of the constructs down there have cisterns. One of the issues, of course, is everything from bacteria to cysts and, and viruses and uh, you know, uh, other harmful elements in the water, preventing it from being consumed. So we created, uh, from previous technology that I invented, a device that is a whole house, whole business water purifier. Here it is here. It's called Carry Pure H2O, or Caribbean Pure Water. Uh, again, it was created out of necessity. Uh, the rainwater captured throughout the world is one of the purest forms of water, but rainwater becomes what it falls into. So it ends up being a, a, a pool for bacteria, for cysts, for you know, um, all kinds of other organisms and feces and things, for making the water completely unusable, which doesn't make sense because if you have a cistern, you have thousands, if not tens of thousands of gallons of water, and the majority of the people in the Virgin Islands drink bottled water. So we figured that we could solve this problem. Now, my device had already been invented, but we went, we, we went ahead and engineered it to work for the Virgin Islands specifically. We, we understood their issues were things such as the taste of the water, uh, the water being microbiologically clean, um, you know, the look uh, from a turbidity standpoint, and of course, the water safety. Is it, you know, is it water that you can drink with confidence? And uh, let's not forget, uh, there's the power issue. So when we designed our unit, we designed it to be passive, which it is. It is green. It adds nothing back to the water. 
it's energy efficient. It uses almost no electricity at all. Uh, instead, allowing the water to be pushed through the unit, either from a cistern pump or from WAPA, only turning on in the event of a power loss, in which case when it turns on, it has internal pumps and a lithium ion battery that provides uh, a, a continuous um, water for several hundred gallons. Um, so you might be sitting in the dark, but you'll always have clean drinking water. So as, as you look at the screen, this is the device. Almost looks like a computer server, um, but it's not. <laughs> it's actually a whole house, a whole business purifier. And we make three different versions. We make one that does five gallons a minute, one that, one that does 10, and one that does 20 gallons a minute. I'm going to show you a couple of installations. I mentioned that I had been in the Virgin Islands 76 days and we were installing units. We installed units on all three islands. Um, we installed it on St. Thomas at the Edelman Observatory, um, at a, uh, a private residence, um, at a fire station, um, and another one at, at a, a, a villa. We installed a, a, a one on St. John in a quad of homes. And on St. Croix, we've installed one at a farm called Sager Farm and one at uh, the uh, Economic Development Authority's uh, 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 building, warehouses. So here are just a couple of short videos. This right here, this first video on the left, oh, where'd it go? Um, is the installation that, that on St. John and the Quad of Homes. The blue device is our technology and that tank right there is also our technology. And then you see the filter on the end. A real quick note about that filter right there. Um, we've all seen them, right? And they usually contain a granulated carbon filter in designed to remove things like taste from the water. Ours is a little different. Our filter uh, currently is not accessible or available to the public. We have an exclusive right to distribute it. This one filter inside of that unit uh, will purify, and when I say purify, remove, actually remove viruses, bacteria, and cysts for almost 30,000 gallons. Now, for us, it is nothing more than kind of a secondary guard. The primary unit, which is the blue unit right here, is the unit that uses ultrafiltration technology and is able to filter water down to 0 0.02 microns at a, a pretty high rate. So this unit here in the Quad of Homes in St. John, uh, Adrian Villas specifically, serves two, two, I'm sorry, serves four residences, and this unit produces 20 gallons a minute. The unit's been running for well over 30 days, and we've constantly query the residents there. They love the taste of the water. They have absolutely no water pressure issues. The second one to the right of that is in a, uh, it's in a duplex, which is actually the Element Observatory. Let me see if I can get it to play. I got my picture on the right here. All right. So this is, this is the unit installed at the Element Observatory. And this is one of our smaller units. Uh, it only produces 10 gallons a minute, which is still a pretty substantial amount of, um, of water. It also measures air quality. Now you might be wondering why in the world would you wanna measure air quality um, for a water purifier? I'll explain that in a minute. Again, we have about seven units installed right now, whole house, whole business water purifiers, capable of producing enough water for pretty much any business, unless you're, you know, WAP or somewhere like that, <laughs> and any home. I'll go on to the next slide here. This slide here talks about the energy efficiency of our technology. Our, as I mentioned, our device uses almost no energy. In fact, it uses about 40 watts of energy currently once a day, but we're about to change that. One of the reasons that we install the units there in the Virgin Islands is we, because we wanted to know how they operated in that environment. We know how they operate up here in Georgia. And, um, and when there are, we had units on a lake up here that was very, very turbid. So the unit had to flush once a day. And flushing is no more than 30 seconds of, of a back flush. It pulls in clean water and it flushes out all that it has captured. We found so far with the units installed in the Virgin Islands that even if we let them run for a week and we flush them, uh, the water is still relatively clear, which is a good sign. But if you've ever looked inside of a cistern, or at least pulled a cup of water from a cistern, you know the water isn't very, very turbid. But now I'm not saying that that is necessarily the application of false, you know, across the field because you know storms can bring things and empty them into the cisterns and cause a stirring up of the debris in the bottom. And but it doesn't really matter. Our device is able to sense the turbidity of the water and clean itself out as necessary. So. I said that is energy efficient, right? Which means that it uses almost no energy at all, maybe 40 watts currently every day, but pretty soon it's probably gonna be 40 watts once a week, which is almost no energy. Um, it has internally a solar rechargeable lithium ion battery and internal backup pumps. Now that kind of flies in the face of claiming that it's a passive device. However, those pumps 
are, are there as a standby. If in the occurrence that power is lost in the Virgin Islands, and we all know that occurs, this unit senses it and instantly switches to its internal pumps and continue, continues to provide purified water. On a single charge, um, our device could provide almost 300 gallons of water. Uh, when I say a single charge, the battery can be easily recharged by attaching solar panels to it or a generator. So it is going to continue to provide water as long as you have water available. I'm sorry, I'm losing my stuff. Okay. Um, uh, okay. okay, right, that's that. Moving on to the next slide. Our device is intelligent. Water purification in and of itself um, is, is, is not anything spectacular because a lot of companies do it. Um, when we designed the Carry Pure device and we were thinking about Caribbean islands, one of the things that we wanted was we wanted the device to tell us when and how to improve it. So we built into the system um, what is called machine learning. This device here is a passive inline filter. However, it contains a computer brain. And that computer brain monitors up to 24 what we call univariate metrics of data. It's going to monitor how much water is in your system. It's going to know if that if that level has changed based on rain or your consumption. It's going to monitor the input and output pressure um, from the, both the cistern and your home. It's going to be able to detect if your cistern has a leak. It's going to monitor water quality. This is the only water purification device that we are aware of. Uh, that has, has a miniature multi-spectral multi water analysis device. It monitors for water quality. It also measures, as I mentioned before, external forces. So it measures hydrologic, which would be the water, and atmospheric forces. The, the external forces include everything from uh, air pressure to air temperature to barometric pressure, even a particulate matter in the air. And all of that actually comes together inside the unit and its, and its brain to tell us how the unit operates at any given moment. The unit will sense when a storm is coming by a drop in the barometric pressure, and it monitors internally the components, the throughput, the quality of the water, and see, sees how that changes as a atmospheric or a hydrologic event is occurring. So it was built with intelligence, and it is, to our knowledge, the only device capable of doing that right now. This next slide talks about you know, the impact of drinking water on your health, right? So if you're gonna make a device intelligent, then it needs to be able to tell you, all right? So we have it set up so that it'll tie into your internet and it'll tell us how to improve it. But you're gonna to wanna to know as a user, you're gonna to wanna to know um, how much water you have in your system. You're gonna to wanna to know when, that's, when that water is going to be out. You're also gonna to wanna to know, you know, if, if, the, if you're losing water pressure somewhere, if your cistern is leaking, um, how much energy is being used by the water um, uh, purification um, how much water are you using on a daily basis? And not on a daily basis alone, but down in 15 second increments. So you could wake up um, at, at nine o'clock and, and it'll tell you how much water was, was used in the past hour, in the past 10 minutes, in the past 30 seconds. It'll tell you how much water your, your residence has used or your business. Um, and the bullet points below indicate the various, some of the metrics that we measure. And it includes water pressure, energy consumption, because even though we use almost no energy, we still want to know how much energy we're using. Plus, we're going to be employing some advanced um, algorithms to tell us how much energy is created using the solar panels that attach to the unit, um, how much water is being used, what the water temperature is, is. And that's important because you want to know, or shall I say, we want to know if the water temperature is impacting the quality or the performance of the machine. Um, water quality, I mentioned a moment ago that we have a miniature multispectral analysis device. This is known as laboratory on a chip technology. It is able to monitor uh, certain aspects of water quality that will allow us to identify and for the unit to forewarn you that there's a possibility that the markers are present for the creation of bacteria in the system. Um, it measures pH, barometric data. Again, we talked about the storms, um, external temperature, air temperature, humidity, and atmospheric particulate matter. Now, real quick, I mentioned about uh, water quality in, in the laboratory on chip technology. The reason that's important is our device is hollow fiber technology that, that uh, filters down to 0 0.02 microns. So we don't use ultraviolet. We don't use sediment filters. Um, our device is actually a physical stop. So we never even allow those, those um, constituents in the water to, to pass to the other side of our unit. So it's not even going to be in your drinking water. I got a tour of a, um, uh, of a resort on the island called Gallows Bay. 
and uh, they have a nice house out there for the residents to come and get bottled water. And it was a very interesting setup. It was sediment filters. It was ultraviolet. It was uh, a carbon filter. Um, and it did a very effective job, a very effective job at killing organisms and making the water taste delicious. The only drawback to that was that, yes, it does kill the organisms, but you're still kind of drinking their dead bodies. And I'm not a big fan of that. It, there was a movie I saw a long time ago called Jurassic Park, and Jeff Goldblum was talking to one of the scientists about, you know, the scientist was telling him that the dinosaurs couldn't reproduce. And Jeff Goldblum made a very sage statement. He says, life will always find a way. And so in, in our minds here at Gordon Water Technologies, we don't even want to risk the chance that some bacteria or some cyst or some virus might not be totally irradiated by ultra, ultraviolet technology. We physically stop it before it ever reaches your mouth. And so the information such as, um, right, the, the information um, such as how, how the about water quality and, you know, the, the, the ability to consume it is all sent to your app uh, via our device. So you're always aware of things. And finally, um, our, carry very, our carry pure unit produces, our big unit produces 20 gallons per minute of drinking water. That's enough to replace over 14,000 16 ounce bottles of water per day. So that is, uh, that is my PowerPoint presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in finding out more about our technology, you can visit cwtvi.com. That's Caribbean Water Technologies, Virgin Islands.com. Thank you. Dr. Fornell, did you want to lead us through the questions? Yeah, happy to. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for your uh, wonderful presentations. Um, that was uh, a lot of knowledge was being shared today. Um, the biggest one, which I guess I was not, um, is obvious, but I never heard it state um, as explicitly as today, is the fact that although there are a lot of regulation from a federal side for public water system, there is no regulation at the home level. So in a VI where we, most of us, the vast majority of us depend on system for our water uh, our supply, uh, we are left on our own. Um, so really glad to hear all those solutions that are solution, but also advice that are being provided to um, start really thinking about how to get you know, a safe water supply in our home here in the Virgin Islands. So, um, that being said, so again, thank you everyone for your uh, presentation and the knowledge that you shared with us today. Um, I'm encouraging everyone to uh, put question in a chat or in a Q&A. Um, so we had a, a first question. I'm just going to go through it. Um, so the, the question was about the soil system. And uh, the question was whether or not the soil system filter for uh, chlorine or bleach. Hi. Um... The, uh, the Sawyer one does not pull out any of your, your mineral types of things. It, it takes care of your bacteria, your protozoa, your cysts, your turbidity. So it's not going to chase the, change the taste of the water either. It's, it's really meant for uh, emergency situations where that is the factor. But no, the okay. fluoride, no. Go ahead. You said fluoride, right? Cl chloride. Chloride, bleach, no. Bleach. No, so it's not going to work on a salty, too salty. You know, it, it actually can work some, but the um, saltiness is such an abrasive substance that it just, it kind of shred for a better, lack of a better word. And that's going to be true for any type of, of cartridge filter types of system. Uh, a saltiness is going to, to really be abrasive on the inside of a filter. So it's and, fine and to use it for a situation and it'll do some good, but limited. Just to clarify, we are talking about chloride, bleach, Clorox. Oh, chloride. Okay, I think chloride is in the you know chlorine. Um, yeah. No, no, any of those types of chemical minerals are not going to be removed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, um, there was another question. Um, so about so I'm looking at. Uh, so okay, so on the website, on the chat, for those who missed it, on the chat, there was a fair amount of information about where to get the the soya system. Um, let me look at some of the open question. Um, so a question for you again, Greg, um, you know, is it any thought about providing a whole house filter system that you can hook directly to the, to the, to your system as a filter, or does it have to be done, um, uh, at the, um, yeah. At the, can you see my phone there? 
Yes, we can. Look, looks like that. It's the it's the similar those ten inch cartridge types of things. It's the same filter we use in our um, in the small one. We do not offer this directly anymore, and the reason was we just found that that um, this one is you can get to it easily, and so for cleaning it, some people would look at it and say, "Oh, that looks dirty. I'm going to hose it down," and they would use a pressure hose and you know damage it. We we had more. Um, user issues with that than our, with ever with our small filters. And we just aren't geared as a family business to support and provide that level of, of maintenance support. So we now have a group, uh, it's an NGO, works primarily in Honduras, but based in the USA, that um, they sell them on our behalf. It's a 10 inch filter. And I can make an introduction, give you contact information for that NGO. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so if you can put that in the chat, that would be good, we'll follow up. Um, okay. Later. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, there's some question for uh, Niman, but before I go to Niman, I will ask a question for um, the two speakers before. First of all, for RCCAP, Niman is asking, um, Luis, if you're still there, um, you know, uh, is RCCAP working with the water testing or water filtration at all? Uh, nope, uh, we, we don't know. We can provide a system. We can assess any equipment uh, if it comply with regulation. We can recommend some monitoring and other stuff, but we don't sell any equipment at this time. Okay, and just so I understand, um, so RCCAP, um, how do we access? How do we request your technical support? Do we go to the website and go for a competitive grant? Uh, or uh, well, uh, from the presentation, uh, you can send a uh, communicate with me or uh, preferably with uh, our supervisor, Josefa Torres. I can send, uh, I put in the chat the, the information uh, of her. Okay, thank you because. so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, one quick question for Lisa. Um, about the um, testing. So uh, are those tests on, available on island in the VI? Um, what's the cost? Are there any um, sort of plans to uh, make them available to the general public? Oh, they're available. We ship, we've been selling our test kits since 2013 and we ship them to every corner of the globe. Um, there is no one price for a test kit because it depends and if you're buying a presence absence testing kit or a most probable number testing kit, and we have choices for kits that contain 25, 50, or 100 tests per kit. So please look at my contact information uh, at the end of my presentation and pop me an email and I'll be happy to send you our price list. Thank but you so much. to give a general sense, it's much less expensive than lab testing. It's extremely reasonable pricing for a field test where you can be doing on-site testing literally in the middle of nowhere. Thank you. And uh, for all participants on the next two days, we're gonna put all the information on our website. So, uh, and we'll send you an email uh, alerting you of that so you can access all the information shared today. Um, going back to uh, Niman, um, we have a few questions for you. Um, so the first question is, can your system backup power, power be used solely as a, um, as a primary power source. Um, is, is the question actually, will our system run solely off of solar? Yeah, I believe that's probably the best way to interpret this question, yeah. sorry. Yeah. The yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, and um, well, so you can- there's a, there's a caveat, forgive me. There's a caveat that is as long as the sun is up, right? Uh, but we have the internal battery, which will then, you know, which will give you a few hundred gallons on a single charge when the sun goes down. and there's always the possibility of putting a larger battery in. Okay, okay. Um, there is a, a, another question um, related to the sort of uh, long-term maintenance. So I know that you just um, set up the, the, the system uh, in, uh, in various homes, but um, long-term maintenance, are there any sort of issue or concern associated with that? Not well, not really. Um, we've been running these things for years here up in Georgia. Um, the design, the systems were designed based on a letter that we got from the United Nations saying that the device needs to be locally manageable and reliable. So we, we develop, developed in, of course, the back flush, which will allow the unit to flush itself out you know, um, as frequently as is required, but it also has the ability to deep clean itself. 
Um, aside from that, we have, as I mentioned before, the external filter, um, which is a, a carbon block, not granulated carbon, a carbon block filter, which is a secondary barrier. That will probably have to be replaced every 27,000 gallons of water. And that takes every bit of a minute and a half, two minutes. And the system will remind you via app when that has to be done. The system monitors itself constantly. So if anything fails, um, and that includes if the membranes physically fail, it's going to tell you. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, this is great. Thank you so much for everyone. Um, I do not see any additional question either in the chat or in the Q&A. Uh, any Mr. of the participants have questions for each other? Go ahead, Christina. Mr. Creaky had a question. Um, Royce, are you on the line? Mr. Creaky? Okay, so... Um, okay, so he said, and I'm not sure who this is to, that's why I'm calling him out. He it's says... The, the last question is about um, the soil system and the fact that um, there was some, uh, the tube of the soil system getting moldy over time, uh, but they made a, they made a new, new adapter. So they were able to find a, a, a different, uh, a way to deal with the, uh, some of the issue coming up with the existing initial tube. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure if he was on, he got his answer. Um, does any um, participant have questions for each other? Well, um, like I said, um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, this was a very, uh, very, very interesting meeting. I did learn quite a lot about things that we can do at a home level um, to make sure that our water is um, safe. Uh, really excited to see not only the fact that we can monitor, but also uh, immediately mitigate what we find using existing technology, and to see the amount of uh, resources and help and support that is available from our federal partners in terms of better understanding uh, water wastewater issues and overall water quality in the territory. So uh, thank you so much for, for you all, uh, for the participant. I hope that um, you had, um, you learned a lot and that you uh, uh, took great pleasure to listening to this knowledge that was shared with you. Uh, as mentioned, we're going to put all the information on the website, um, cgtc-usvi.com uh, in the next two days, and then we will send you all an email alerting you that we've uh, placed the information so you can go and visit our website. Um, Christina, do you have any closing remarks? Yes, I just want to thank all the panelists for coming out. We've planned this um, for quite some time and the hurricanes got in the way and then COVID got in the way. So thank you for your support. I would like to ask each of you if we reach out to you, if you would be willing to support our um, guide. We're going to do a cistern and water quality guide. So hopefully we can tap you for some information and support on that. And to all of our participants, we'd like to thank you and let you know that if you attend more than four of our activities, we'll be happy to get in touch with you and get you a Sawyer water filter. So please stay tuned for all of our events and activities. And remember, clean drinking water is a right, not a luxury. Thanks so much for joining everyone. Thank you, panelists. Thank you very much. Have a nice Bye, everyone. great day. Bye, everyone.